Hello and welcome back to the channel. I have a new 3D print to show today and it's one that should help me with mounting some parts and assist with target shooting this brand new Ruger 1022 I just got. So stick around and check it out. The Sportsman's Club recently installed a gallery range for 22s and I wanted to get out there and test it out. Of course there are a couple of options for shooting at the range. One is to stand and shoot. For the length of time that I'm guessing I'm going to be out there though, this could get tiring. They do have tables there that I could shoot from which are very convenient for longer range sessions. Initially I was going to buy a bench rest from the local Walmart, but about fainted when I saw the price. I researched other ones a little bit online and found that there were many other options. Mostly they were made from plastic, some with choice parts on more expensive ones being steel. Here's a bench rest made from a sandbag, I just happen to have a few of those laying around. Maybe a combination sandbag bench rest? The sky is the limit for pricing on these things, but at this point I had already decided what I was going to do. I wanted to start with a base, since this was going to be the largest consumer of material. I kept the build volume in mind for my 3D printer when designing it and tried to maximize this part's size on the build plate while keeping the material usage down by adding some cutouts and cavities in key locations. You can see here how it takes up most of my 220mm square plate. And just in case you're interested in the settings I use, here they are. This is the only part that I didn't use the skirt for fear of pushing it oversized. Total print time is 37 hours and 40 minutes while using 304 grams of material. Better get this thing to the printer. Not to mention the time lapse photos at a few seconds every layer too. The best thing is with 3D printing it's kind of lights out. I just have to check on it once in a while to make sure it's doing okay. If this part prints out okay and I'm sure it's going to work, I'll start going on the other parts that it needs. Let's just get it pulled from the build plate here real quick. Man, this thing is already giving me problems. It's gonna have to come off of here. In the short time I've had to handle this thing, I just can't get over how pleasing this surface is with all the smooth contours. Okay, let's get it off. That was surprisingly easy. You know, this thing feels pretty durable. I think it might just work. With that, let's get into what other parts I'm going to have to print out. If you haven't figured it out yet, it's a bench rest for rifle shooting. This one has three feet sticking out the bottom so it will have the stability of a tripod. I wanted the feet there to avoid any flat surface conflicts I might encounter. Either the print could be warped or the table I'd be sitting it on could be uneven. There's an adjustable yoke at the top to hold the stock of the rifle securely. This entire assembly is 3D printed. I just printed the main body of it, now I'm moving to the tripod feet and 3D printed screws. The feet are pretty simple, a round nut with internal threads with a flat on one side that keeps it from rotating when tightening the screw. The screw is just a standard half 13 socket head. I think I'm going to give it a shot to print all of them at once to save some setup time. Looks like they all came out pretty good. Let's get them pulled and match them up to the base. The first one went in surprisingly well. Let's get the others in. They're a little bit wobbly right now because I didn't tighten them up all the way. Good thing they take a standard 3 8 inch hex wrench. Just gonna put them finger tight for now. They're just plastic screws. I have no idea how much torque they can take. The wobble tightened out of it. I'm happy so far, so let's get into the next part. Moving on to the large threaded insert that will help the yoke travel up and down. This thing is basically the same design as the tripod's feet, only much bigger. This is a one and a half inch thread on the inside, believe it or not. I was just thinking, if these threads don't work out for me, there is no way I'm gonna buy an inch and a half tap and die set to clean it all out. Let's just hope they work. First thing though, I have to check that I gave it enough clearance to slide into the base piece. Yep, on to the next piece I guess. Well, the anxiety is getting to me. 
I had to print the mating inch and a half screw for that large nut. It has a hollowed out end on it for the interchangeable yolks. Don't let this thing fool you though, it's a massive four and a half inches long. Hey, that's pretty big for 3D printing anyways. Hey, sorry you didn't get the exposure set on the camera properly. Although it is still mesmerizing watching the thread spiral around the outside. Who needs to see the awesome gyroid infill anyways? These prints just keep coming off the printer looking great. The best 3D printer is the one you have, I always say. So let's check the fit. You can see the exposed internal threads through the top of the insert nut I just printed. It fits awesome. I'm beginning to grow more confident in this thing with each additional part. But the insert and threaded studs still slide around it, and it won't work properly without the jam nut. This will go around the top of the screw to kind of hold all the adjustable parts tight when positioned. Let's get it printed and over to the rest of the finished parts. Now if only I could get the threads to start. Just look at how nicely this nut travels on the stud. This actually feels kind of rewarding itself in a way. So with that, basically all the parts are printed for the adjustable height base. The only other part is the yoke that the rifle rests in. This yoke has a smooth tapered end piece that's supposed to fit into the top of the threaded stud printed earlier for quick interchange. I originally wanted to print this one standing up as it would be in the rifle rest assembly, but figured it would be stronger for its intended use with the layer orientation if it were laying down. So this is the only part from this assembly that got supports on it. I'm sure I could explain it better, but it was a last second decision. I guess just think about it and let me know in the comments what orientation you would have printed this one. And it was that split second decision at the last minute that cost me a whole bunch of time trying to remove the supports. I mean, these things did not want to come off for some reason. I spent way too long bringing the surface quality where I wanted it to be. Two hours later. Guess I can only justify it with at least now I have a strong part with no worries. Anyways, I'm gonna stop second guessing myself and check the fit with the two tapers together. They fit pretty good. Adjust this jam nut down to lock the height and position, and I'm done. All in all, I think it looks pretty cool. So now the big question, it looks okay, but does it function for its intended use? Well let's check that out right now. I just so happen to have this rifle it was designed for right here. All that and it doesn't fit. On a scale from 1 to 10 my friend, you're f How in the heck did this happen? The inside of the yoke measures just under 1.5 inches but that's what it's supposed to be. The rifle area where it's supposed to mount is in the neighborhood of one and five eighths of an inch. Well, I did measure it, but I measured it from the model I downloaded from Sketchfab. The model looked fantastic, but I did have to scale it when I imported it into SolidWorks. I guess I just trusted it because it looked awesome, but never checked it against the rifle I was using. <laughs> the best thing is I have a quick fix for this. Right now it measures about one and a half inches, but it just came off the printer a few moments ago, and all I need to do is give it a couple shakes and it should just grow. And just like that, let's give it another measurement. Yep, perfect. One and three quarters inch wide now. Magic. Obviously, I'm just kidding. I had to change the dimension of the model and reprint it. This time when I dropped it into Ultimate Cura, I didn't want to have the sand all the support surfaces, so I figured I would rotate it a bit and lay it flat on the surface I had the sand last time. You can see here that the blue part is currently sitting on the bed surface with the red part requiring supports. I'm just going to turn it up a bit and use this lay flat button. You can see now that the tapered portion is blue. 
That means it is resting on the build plate. I'll spare you the time lapse on this one, so here it is. Slightly wider. See, it's not all easy. Well, it's kind of easy, I guess. Getting it together is just a slight press and it locks together solid. So it's the moment of truth right here. Now, not only is this rest good for a stable shooting platform, but it also allows the rifle to be supported while working on it. This thing is working pretty well so far and I've been pretty satisfied. Doing any kind of work on a rifle that isn't supported can be frustrating, and I'm sure I could have mounted this scope without the support, but I'm glad to have it to do the work. This print was a great experience for me, and it's also a print that saves a little bit of money in the long run, while improving any maintenance aspect of the rifle as well as to improve the accuracy of target practicing. I think it's time to field test it at the range. Bruh.